Hello, I'm about to have a tea for two with Patricia Davis, who's just been awarded the Légion d'honneur for a role in the Second World War. Follow me. So Patricia, thanks, thank, thank you very much for joining us today for our little Tea for Two interview. Um, I was just wondering, you've just received the Légion d'honneur from the ambassador. Yes. It's a very special day for us, the French embassy, because it's always a very uh, emotional moment for us mm -hmm. to pay uh, tribute and, and to show our gratitude to, to people like you who help uh, liberate our country. Um, what do you feel at the moment? What, what do you feel for receiving this, this award? Well, I feel that the French government and the ambassador and everybody have been incredibly generous because there were so many of us who were involved in the war and uh, very much wanted to be part of the war effort. And, um, you know, I was fortunate with the right age and able to uh, do my bit, but I never would have expected to have an honor like the Légion d'honneur, which I think is absolutely a wonderful medal to have. So, uh, you know, what a wonderful day. <laughs> you, were, you were very young when, when you decided to, to, to join and, as you said, like uh, do your bit for, for your country. Uh, why did you decide to do what you did? Well, I was 18 when I joined the Women's Royal Naval Service. You had to be 18. Mm -hmm. And um, when I put down that I knew German on my application form, then uh, they asked me to do a test, and I didn't know what I was going to do. I was terrified I was going to be a spy and have to jump out of an airplane. <laughs> and I was much too timid to want to do that. and. Uh, then when I'd done their initial training and they explained to me that I would now do a, a secret course on how to search for German ships' messages, naval ships' messages, and uh, write down exactly what I heard. They did run very good training courses at a little secret establishment in Wimbledon. Um, I was very relieved because uh, I could stay uh, in the UK. And you didn't have to take a parachute. And I didn't jump. have to jump out of an aeroplane. <laughs> so. And uh, w could you tell what you were doing or was it completely secret and you couldn't tell a anyone? Absolutely secret. Mm. We started by signing the Official Secrets Act before we did the course. And um, you couldn't tell your family, you couldn't tell anybody. And people in the war were very good not asking you. So we had a sort of cover story that... So course, what was your cover story, for example? Well, it was that we had jobs in radio, oh. because in a building that was covered in masts and, you know, uh, people could anywhere have guessed that yeah. was what we were doing. Yeah. But it wouldn't have crossed anyone's mind it was German radio. They would have thought it was talking to British ships. Yeah. So basically you were getting the signals from the, from the German ships and translating everything you would, uh, you would hear? Or how did it work concretely? The way it worked was, of course, we worked around the clock. Um, watches, we called our shifts, four hours on, eight hours off. And um, we knew the frequencies that the German fleet used. So we only searched those. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we came on a ship giving a message, then we had to write down exactly what we heard, mm -hmm. because a lot of it was in Enigma code. Of course. And Bletchley Park yeah. wanted an exact yeah. uh, record. If you weren't sure about a letter, you never guessed. You left a blank. Yeah. Um, and you wrote it all down on a pad, and as soon as the message was completed, if it was a coded message, um, we had a standby Wren in our watch room as well as the ones doing the listening. She would take it to a teleprinter machine and send it immediately to Bletchley Park. What they did, except they did decoding, we never knew. Okay. And we wouldn't have dreamt of asking. And 
did you intercept a message that was clear and that really that you remember vividly or do you remember any message you 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 had to translate or I don't um particularly remember any messages they were very often not very clear because a ship at sea sending a radio message it can fade it can be distorted um you know it was you had to have a good hearing to get the messages down at all mm. um and uh, such a lot of them were in code okay. that we couldn't tell what they were about mm. we got odd sort of anomalies like we picked up messages we couldn't make out what these were and they turned out to be russian front tanks german tanks on the russian front okay. and they sort of did a skip and went up okay. and came down again in yorkshire wow. um, <laughs> and they were tanks talking to each other so we weren't involved with that we were covering ships okay. and these ships okay and now when you meet um younger children um or like younger generations what what do you think uh, is the message you should tell them uh as thinking about the war and and, and what Yes um, I do sometimes do a talk to a school or something because I think it is terribly important to know accurate history and if they go and see a film like yeah. you know the ones about Bletchley Park yeah. um they're going to think all this is true and it isn't uh, so yes. i do if i'm giving a talk make sure that the facts i'm giving are the correct facts mm -hmm. and as it's now over 70 years ago um you know it's perhaps even more important that those of us who are still around try and get the message across of what actually did happen mm -hmm. how it actually was mm -hmm. and not how films and tv programs sometimes might um, make it more glamorous more <laughs> yeah, you know right. exciting no it was like this <laughs> and you were saying that your your job was top secret you couldn't mention it to anyone when when were you able to to disclose that and tell your family or your friends or your relatives um about what you really yes. did during the war when was that well you signed the official secrets act mm -hmm. well we all did before we started training you were never told your release from it you're told you know till the end of your life you've okay. got to remain silent about all this yeah. so it was years off the war before i told my family i think exactly what I'd been doing. Um you had a sort of cover story and uh but um it was um something you were never actually released from. But some people went to their graves without saying. Yes. And what was the reaction of your family when you told them? Um well I think they had lots of other things to think about. Like my father was a prisoner of war oh. in the Far East mm -hmm. and he came home and that was probably the biggest thing for my family. Um and what led you to um to learn languages and learn German when you were young? Well, I was the only person in the whole of our service who learned German from the family cook because <laughs> uh, my grandfather who we lived within his house in the country uh, couldn't get English cooks and he found that these uh Jewish women refugees in Austria were so desperate to get out they would come and take a job as a cook so he had a series of austrian cooks who didn't usually speak much english and as i had evenings at home as a schoolgirl i used to spend them tickly with one very bright austrian cook he had from vienna so i gather i still speak German with a slight Austrian, Austrian accent. Austrian accent. <laughs> and did you did you manage to get in touch with her after the war? She stayed with she the stayed. family. Yeah. She stayed on in England. She would really been trying to get to America but she settled for staying in England. And you were you were telling me you you joined the navy. Why did you choose the navy in particular? It was really because on my mother's side um her mother was one of a Channel Island family. And all the men in the family had always gone into the navy, mm. and uh, my 
godfather was her brother. And he said, of course, the girls would want to join the Wrens. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, if Uncle Charles says that, he was a destroyer captain at the time, I think I'll join the Wrens. I was delighted I did. Mm -hmm. It's very good service. So you were ready to, to do anything that, uh, that uh, was required to, to fight in this war and, and win the war? Well, I think anything except being a spy, because I was rather worried that having said I knew German, I would have to jump out oh. of an aeroplane to be a spy. Yeah. So, you know, that was a bit outside mm. anything. But um, I didn't know what we would be doing until once we'd completed yeah. the course and they told us. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And, uh, lovely to have the Légion d'honneur. It's one of the most moving uh, moments we have uh, oh, yes. in all, all, all yes. our events because it's so important for us to... Very important. It means a lot to, to my country. We never forget that. No, I know. Did for, for well, it, it is the most wonderful honour and having sat on top of a cliff looking across at occupied France mm. for a year, yeah. you know, I would never have dreamt mm. this would happen, and it has. And you see how happy we are.